call to order the Ironton City Council meeting of January 13th, 2022. Um, with us, we have Father Huffman with St. Joseph, St. Lawrence O'Toole, and St. Mary's Churches. Um, he is going to give us our invocation immediately, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If you please stand and remain standing. Thank you. Let us pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we thank you for your many blessings you bestow upon us, the gift of life, the gift of our faith. We thank you for what we do tonight here together. We thank you for our city council, for the men and the young lady who serve, for our mayor who face difficult challenges to make difficult decisions. We ask you to inspire them with your wisdom, your knowledge, to give them fortitude to stand for what is right and what is good for all. We ask you to bless our nation in the midst of its difficulties. And even in the midst of that, we thank you that we are able to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. We ask you to bless us and watch over us, be with us, and help us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. You're welcome. Aye. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Born in the end. Roll call, please, Martin. Larry. Here. Katie. Here. Harvey. Here. Tom. Here. I do want to bring up Nate, Nate did contact me and said he had prior engagements with the basketball team he is coaching. Um, next on the agenda, we have the approval minutes of the regular council meeting of December 23rd, 2021, the joint meeting of Council and Upper Township Trustees of December 23rd, 2021, and the Finance Committee meeting of December 23rd, 2021. Does anybody have any edits, omissions, inclusions? I'm hearing none. Those minutes will stand as approved. Next, uh, we have audience participation. Um, the mayor has invited Benton and Tyler from ABM, and we will be followed by uh, Mike Pemberton from the Sanitation Department. Are you guys good with that? Benton and Tyler, if you'd address. Yeah. Council, please. So good evening. Uh, my name is Brenton Mokaitis, project manager with ABM uh, for the Bundled Energy Solutions Project. And now that we're nearing completion on the project, I wanted to give an update to council just to let everyone know where we stand and then also answer any questions or concerns that you may have. So with that being said, right now we are 98% complete with installation on the project. There are several other tasks that still need to follow that. That's completion of punch list items, deficiencies um, and then measurement verification commissionings things of that nature but with all that being said I kind of wanted to go down through and discuss um, each one of the technical categories and then get into those as follows so with each technical category on technical category number one are with the boiler upgrades those are 100% complete as of right now those uh, that scope of work took place here in the city center um, that work is fully online, operational, and has been inspected and certified by the state of Ohio. So we're good to go there. Um, technical category number two was upgrade to the cooling towers, which is also here for city center. That is 99% complete and consists of two different components that make that up. Uh, one of which is the verific uh, um, basically the ozone system which takes care of the water that serves the cooling tower itself and also the ver uh, speed drive which serves for the motor as well that speed drive we had a little bit of a delay and the problem we had the delay with that was procurement due to covid now we do have that item in stock and it is currently being installed and should be completed by the end of this week so that is currently on task and should be completed by end of day tomorrow uh, the third one is for the building automation system upgrades. We are at 90% complete. The reason of that being is we still have lots of point-to-point -point checkouts that need to be made. Point-to-point -point checkouts are basically 
confirming that we have strong communication between all of the equipment that we install in the field is back to our uh, automation system itself. So all of those uh, point to point checkouts, whether it be the boilers that we install downstairs, the brand new water source heat pumps that we're installing throughout the city center are all communicating properly and working online as need be. Additionally to that, we're installing a server into the IT center, which will bring all of the buildings throughout the city of Ironton into the system to where you can not only monitor them, but control different set points and trend all data throughout the city. That comes very in hand when it comes to measurement ver verification and making sure that we're meeting that energy guarantee. So that work is also slated to be completed by the end of this week um, on the 14th. So we're good to go as well as building automation systems at this point in time. Uh, technical category number four is for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning upgrades. This is 99% complete and it is consisting of three components, one of which is at the fire department. We installed brand new heaters and air conditioners. Uh, all those are online and operational. Uh, the other one consists over at the water treatment plant, and that is the same thing, brand new heaters and air conditioning units, which are also online and operational. And the third component is the installation of water source heat pumps throughout the city center. Now, most of all of the water source heat pumps are online and operational. There's two more units that need to be installed. Uh, those units will be completed again by the end of day tomorrow on the 14th. So again, we're at 99% complete on technical category number four. Technical category number five is 100% complete, and that's the lighting upgrades. I'm sure you've seen a big difference throughout the uh, city center with not only the switches that are on the wall that control all of the lights, but the color and the brightness of those lights as well. So those, that particular technical category was installed not only at the city center, the fire department, but then also at the water treatment plant as well. Um, it was not done at the wastewater treatment plant. The technical category number six, which is envelope upgrades, is also 100% complete. Now that work was done at all four buildings, not only within city center itself, the fire department, water treatment facility, and wastewater treatment facility as well. That consists of your door sweeps, your weather, weather stripping you see around the doors, foam boarding. We've even put doors upstairs that go to the ship's ladder to the roof just to make sure that we're sealing up your building, that you're not going to have any infiltration from outdoor elements and things of that nature. And last but not least is technical category number 12, which is transformer upgrades that took place at the water treatment plant. And that was two different transformers, one that's stationed in the pump house and another that's stationed within the storage warehouse. Both are online and operational. So we should be complete with installation uh, with all of those technical categories by the end of this week, on the 14th. Through the following two weeks to this month, we're gonna um, follow up on what I was speaking about before, completion of punch list items, deficiencies, and also commissioning. That's any problems that we found with the installation, whether it be on a quality aspect of it, something that they've missed, if there's a lack of communication between said community or said installation and the building automation system that's what that work is going to consist of and that will take place for the following two weeks in january beginning of february is where we start to bring in our m and v team now that's a team from abm and what they do is they come in not only to make sure that the commissioning that was done was on point and that all those communication checkpoints that our subcontractor said is complete we verify they're also going to uh, put together a post-installation report, and that post-installation report will not only list all the findings that we found with our commissioning, our own commissioning, but it'll also make sure that we're meeting the energy guarantee. And if we're not meeting the energy guarantee, figuring out where that problem resides and fixing it. So that's a report that will be delivered to the city of Ironton. Following that, the last two weeks of February is where we deliver ONM manuals uh, which basically brings you through um, you know, how to operate the, the systems, things of that nature, the maintenance of them, and, and so forth. That and we'll provide training to anybody that needs it, the city of Ironton, um, all the maintenance personnel, anyone else 
that wants to join and we can have multiple training sessions if need be. So that's really where we're at. We're looking to close this project out February 25th and um, it's on schedule to the original schedule that we presented in the, uh, the beginning of this project. <clears throat> so with that being said, I just wanted to open it up for any questions or concerns that you guys may have. And I also plan on presenting again at the, with council when this project is concluded. I just want to clarify real quick. I think, I believe I said Denton and it is Brenton. Okay. Yeah, B-R-E-N. I'm sorry for that, I apologize. Oh, no, you're fine. Great. So um, when, this, when this whole um, thing was first presented to mm -hmm. us, we were in a significantly different um, energy climate than we are <coughs> currently. So Correct. as the current energy climate and, and the price of energy going up, has that impacted the, um, the savings that we're going to see? And, and if so, um, are, are we still going to see the enough savings to pay for the price of the? It, it's a great project? question, and that's all taken into consideration. What they do is in the beginning of the project, when we perform our audits, we walk our subcontractors, we create a baseline. So we look at your energy bills, we look at you know, past and current temperatures and things that, that, that nature, excuse me, and it's all built into the algorithm. That's correct. So, and those reports will be generated by my MV team and delivered to the city of Ironton. And so when I spoke about the building automation system, bringing all of that together, shredding your data, we also will be monitoring that remotely. So if we see an issue and we say, hey, you know, we're spending way too much energy at the fire department, so to speak, and let's take a look at the trend data. You might see that, you know, the bedroom has been kept at 65 degrees in the middle of summer, and that's really causing an energy impact. We can find things like that and be able to correct them. But to answer your question, to go back to it, we've created a baseline which not only looks at utility rates, but also um, where it stands. And yes, um, that'll all be taken care of in the PIR. Okay. I, yep. I can offer a thought on that too, if you don't, don't mind. I'm, I'm Tyler. I'm sure. Uh, if you think about the, the guarantee is really on the amount of energy you're going to consume, <clears throat> so how many kilowatt hours or how much gas. If your utility costs go up, your savings actually grows if you think about it right because the amount that you pay per unit of energy has actually gone up the value of that savings goes up with it does that make sense the, the amount of money you have, have avoided spending is actually greater than where your utilities go up which is good news because utilities are at historically historical low right now so as they trend up over the next 15 20 years of that guarantee your savings will actually grow more than what was modeled to you, right. which is only positive. So I, don't saying, that, I don't know if that helps answer your question. So you're saying we hit the sweet spot. <laughs> yeah, in, in many ways you really did. This This has been sort of a sweet spot. Uh, utilities are an all-time low. Uh, money is at an all-time low when you think about borrowing rates and things like that. This, this really is a little bit of a sweet spot. I think give yourselves a pat on the back for that. <laughs> Anybody have anything else? We're good. One thing I do want to add before I leave is it's been fantastic working with the city of Byrington. Um, you know, whether it be John, Mark, Eric Cramblett, it's just been very easy to be able to, you know, implement this project and see it through. So I just want to definitely thank everyone for their involvement and, and help throughout the way. So. I'd, I'd like to thank you guys for working through the pandemic and the speed at which I saw things done because it seemed like every time I come in the city building something else was being done or somewhere you know so um, I was really impressed with with the speed of which things got done we're not you know sometimes you're used to seeing things drag out drag out drag out sure you guys got in and well, made some improvements quickly so I'll be on you know the last five percent of any project you know whether it be construction or anything is the hardest to bring across the finish line so I you know I'm here every single week making inspections making sure we're keeping on schedule and if you ever need me for anything any concerns come up whether there's problems with any of the building on uh, heating ventilation air conditioning or lighting please let me know and I'll make sure it's handled properly thank you Not a problem.
Thank well, you very much. Mayor, do you have anything for ABM? Good? Good to you know. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, next up, well. we have an invited guest, uh, Mr. Pemberton <coughs> from Sanitation. Step up to the podium. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, my name is Mike Pemberton. I'm, I live at 1930, State Route 243 Ironton, Ohio. Uh, I'm the superintendent over street sanitation and flood control. Uh, our sanitation trucks has given us some problems here in the last couple weeks. Uh, our first truck that we had apart, we've been waiting on parts for it for two weeks now. And it's, a, I guess they, everybody blames it on the pandemic, which is probably true, but we, we've been waiting on that truck uh, for the parts. The total amount for for that is, is around $4,000 to fix this truck. We just had another truck go down uh, the day before yesterday, and in order to put this truck back on the road, which both of them needs to be fixed, uh, because we, we're starting to hear, I'm running two shifts on one truck. This truck's running its route, we're bringing the truck in, there's guys waiting here to jump on it, and they go out and they do their route. Uh, but the sweep blade, the slide panel uh, was damaged. You know, when we get up against a dumpster and this dumpster is clear full and you don't see a four by four or a six by six or even a cross tie, or it could have a small car in it and we wouldn't know it if it's buried. And it's, it, it busted the panel and the sweep blade out of it. And the grand ticket on that thing is to, uh, is around $8,368. But I was presented to you guys just to keep you aware, the FYI here. And uh, hopefully we can get both of these trucks back on the, back on the road. Anybody? Any questions? No discussion. Mr. Hill? Um, Mike had called me and talked to me about that today, and I had let him know that in the temporary budget that there is, uh, I have to look at it, we just closed the month and rolled the year today. I don't think that there's anything that's been encumbered yet in his garbage equipment replacement fund. He should have enough money set aside in there to have both repairs completed. Right. So that doesn't have to come out of sanitation. That comes out GDR. GDR. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mike, those uh, parts are ordered, correct? <laughs> we get the runaround with this also. This this, this new way tr uh, packer. When we bought it, it was a, it was a good packer, uh, but some some reason nobody wants to pick pick up and handle parts for. Uh, they they pass the buck on. Well, this is not my territory. I can't tell you because it's not my territory, and, and you 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 deal with stuff like that. And uh, it's it's some little town in uh, Youngstown, Ohio. We found that does have the parts, but I said, well, it's probably be as cheap for us just to drive up and get them instead of paying freight. Sure. And uh, the guy said, no, we we have to send them direct from our factory to you. So I said, well, it's another snag in the road, but. We'll deal with it. <clears throat> Anything else? Give any kind of time frame on that? Uh, probably a, <laughs> if we do get them ordered, it'll be two days on the road uh, just to get in here uh, when, when we do get it ordered. So, but this, you know, the, the shipping, we're probably going to have around a thousand bucks in shipping or more because. Uh, the sweet blade and that packing panel is probably a ton, probably weighs a ton, all of it together. D does our mechanic handle those? Yeah. Matter of fact, we all kind of give him a hand today just to get the thing apart. Right, right. I know that. I mean, that's some heavy, heavy oh, yeah. parts and, and you know, yeah, we it's, had not, a, it's not easy work. So. We had a two ton lift to pull on right. it just to lift the, the sweet blade up out of the hopper. Well, you've always got the, you've always, you've, now you've got the, uh, 
the truck. The, <laughs> yeah, the, or boom the, truck, the, the boom, boom truck. truck. Yeah, we've yeah. Got boom it, truck well, it's it's too big to get in the garage to do any lifting. So. But we do have it. Yeah. Okay. But you're looking north of twelve thousand dollars to get both trucks fixed. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank Mr. Mayor, grab real quick. Yeah, sure. Quick. I called Sam last night. I don't. He he said you guys talked, and I don't know what you guys came up with, or if you're going to be able to help um, the village of Chesapeake out with their issues. But if you are, thank you, because um, they they're in dire straits. Mm -hmm. I guess with their. Uh, council and mayor leaving and selling off equipment and they realized at the last snowstorm oh we have no way to treat our streets and yeah. the bridge going into Huntington was a mess and so wow. what whatever you guys have done today to, to help them I, I appreciate it okay we'll do what we can yep okay Mike, thank, thank, you. thank you Mike thank you <laughs> we have any other audience participation Bob or what I just have a couple things. Um, something that will probably be coming next council meeting. Um, we've had our meeting with EPA, US, and uh, OEPA. Um, we received that grant from the House Bill 168 money for the design on Batham Lane Orchard Lift Station uh, upgrades. So we will probably be sending a, a, for the Andersons to draft us an ordinance to enter that contract with IBI. Uh, I think the cost is about 170 and some change, 170,000. The, the grant was 168,000. So um, other than that, we're working on getting everything applied for for EDA um, grant application as well that will help, um, hopefully help out with our uh, third street reconstruction project that we've been working on with water line, storm sewer replacement, and resurfacing of Third Street, um, which already has 680,000, I believe, in grant funding. So. But other than that, uh, you guys got anything, questions you have? Um, I believe we were doing a, a study, a road paving study, has yeah. that been completed? Uh, well, right now, um, if so, the, the cost on some of our paving projects, we have to know what all we're spending, you know, before these app the grant application comes back, right? So once we know what we can spend, then we'll have an idea of what we can pave. But yes, we've been working on the grade of each road. I don't know that we're going to be able to say we're going to pave all of Fifth Street or all of Sixth Street. It may be a block here, a block there addressing the ones that are in the worst conditions that we have. But we do have a preliminary outline of the grades of each individual street. Um, but Kiova is still working on that on their own. That's not something that we're having to pay for. The timetable for that is to have that completed and to begin a paving project in, in spring or early summer. I don't know that that would happen. I think we would have to have a design and everything. Like, I know that the bond has to be spent out two years from this past spring so but we're, we're working on it but I mean we, we have to have a engineering design we need to make sure that we're putting our money in the best way we can we can't just throw it all at one block you know so we really need to address which streets are needing it the most which ones aren't going to qualify for grant funding or matching um, so most of our residential streets that serve no business or purpose or those are the ones that we'll have to look at with whatever's left from all the other paving projects that we already have going on. Well, Mayor, since you're up there, I've got a simple, couple of them that's simple for you. Okay. We got, there's a company that comes in the Iron Country Public, garbage trucks, I had several calls this past week when they go out to out here work to the uh, we used to call it the welfare department I think the Department of Human Services building on 7th yeah they go in there and, and dump their dumpster then they come back down Mulberry on the brick street oh yeah and they the residents are claiming it's damaging the street. I've, yeah, it's actually. The lawn that's the next one up, this solid concrete away from the 7th, 3rd. Yeah, we've, that's, 
probably the same folks we spoke with. Um, we've talked to them before about changing the route, but we can't quite tell them not to drive on a street that they have to drive on to get the pickup because they are allowed in the commercial um, properties to pick up sanitation. There's just a lot of people, residents, don't know why they're using a brick mulberry when you got the other end of the block's walnut and it's all concrete. So anyway. Yeah, we could talk to them again, but I, you know, I know they have to access um, that. And then I got another thing that kind of concerns me. I don't know a whole lot about it, and I want to turn this over to you and John Neal. Um, you know, we keep talking about paving streets and doing all this repair work, and the the gas tax that we receive from the state from the feds. I went in and, and looked this up on the internet. And right now the federal rates 385 or 38.5 cents per gallon that we get and there's a says here that the center Huffman tip city has introduced uh, Senate bill 277 which will lower the gas tax from 38 to 28 we're gonna lose 10 cents a gallon have you looked at that or Following that anywhere? No, it doesn't surprise me out of our state legislature and well, Senate. So. I'm going to give you this and ask for you and John to look into it because if we lose 10 cents a gallon. I think some of these projects that we're kind of spending so much money may, may not be available there. But I mean, this thing is it, Matt? It would be Matt in effect Huffman? from that... July 1st of 22. Until July 1st of 27, according to the bill, so you're talking about five years discount, 10 cents a gallon. So, yeah, we'll look into it and we'll take another fight to them if we need to. And it may not affect us at all. It's probably a money to lose, I don't think. Mm, okay. Craig? <clears throat> What's the um, responsiveness been like to the group home registration? The group home registration? Yeah. Um, that we Residential passed. treatment centers. In the past, like since the last meeting? Yeah. I don't know. But that hasn't been, I'll have to, you know, look. But I mean, that's where it just now happened. They have 30 days is the reason I ask. And it, yeah. It, I mean. Do you want us to mail out letters to them? Or the ones that were. Do we order. have a list? I mean, they had yeah. 30 days to comply. You know, we have a list. That's a problem. A lot of them are registered with the laws. At least put it out in in the um, newspaper. In yeah. the newspaper or social media, and something just because they they had 30 days to comply. So I, okay. I didn't I didn't know the status of it. Then. I, All right. Yeah. No. Sorry. I. Okay. That's what I was, I was like. I, how to monitor that especially with everything that's been going on um, you know we're slammed with sending out letters on all of these uh, condemnation letters to try and get them into the application for this Department of Development project that's going on so that's what most of our focus has been on trying to get as many properties on that list for that funding so or will that be on social media or newspaper with if somebody asks somebody where should they should look should it be on our website should it be on i'd say all they have to do it through omos right yeah. no that's and that, that was the issue there's very few actually register with omos most of these treatment facilities residential treatment facilities are actually uh Residential. Independent. They're, they're independent, so they're they're taking them off site from the residents to give them treatment, which is why we did this. The changes that we made to that to that ordinance. Okay. So yeah, I don't think you're going to find a list. So yeah, and we haven't been able to hire an officer to do that either yet. Um, and I want to speak on the updates we have with the police.
police department, you know, in the hiring civil service situation, that might help also. So that person that we talked about identifying. Evans, Pam Wagner, Chief of Police. Um, we do have the, we do have two immediate openings. Um, met with civil service last night. We will be given a test on March the first. Um, <clears throat> The problem with the residential homes, as we've been saying for many years in the police department, is unless we get a call there, we don't even know they're there. No one tells us. I mean, it just is what it is. However, I have made my officers aware of the uh, staffing situation and what we're expecting on this. Officers are uh, in the process of adding any complaints we get at those group home to what we call our nuisance list. I go through those regularly about every 30 to 60 days. Um, if we get multiple complaints, even if they're on private residences, as you know, we passed that nuisance ordinance several couple years ago. Brigham helped me with some sample letters, so we do start mailing out letters with that. Um, but as far as trying to reach out to residential facilities, like I said, they, they don't register with us. We don't even know they're there until we get calls there. Well, that's I think that's what the goal is to promote promote it. And then if, if we do receive a call and they're not on the registry, that's when we can, you know what I'm saying? I think that yeah. is the goal. So if we can promote that quickly yeah. and then get them start starting to register, Wait, once we <laughs> get a complaint on a nuisance property, hey, are you registered or are you not? Right. I mean, is that, that's. Yeah, and it's just another tool in our arsenal to be able to, to regulate. I mean, it's it's a huge issue. I no. mean, it, I'm not going to say it isn't. It's, it's a big issue. I agree. Bob? Um, Pam, I follow, kind of follow these, these homes myself, and I get my information from the fire department because they actually go and inspect the houses, make sure they got fire extinguishers. And How did they get their information? I don't have a clue. Well, perhaps they need to but share stopped, with other departments. They stopped and talked to me about it, and they were telling me about these different homes, and they inspect them. So maybe if you'd meet with the fire chief or something, maybe they, you guys can trade information. Are you aware and, of that? Uh, I think that's the facilities, though. I can answer that question. It's not the homes, you don't think? I'll get with Moose tomorrow, get a clarification on that, or Monday, I'm sorry, I'm off tomorrow. Yeah. But um, I'll get with Moose, Monday's a holiday, I'm sorry, Tuesday, get a clarification on that. Sure. And if nothing else, maybe we can go to where they are inspecting and say, hey, where's these people staying? Exactly. I believe it's Firefighter Joseph, if I'm correct. Jeff. John, right? Yeah. yeah. Chris has got a question. Her statement. I can answer that. Uh, in order for them to get the uh, Medicaid funding, Part of what they have to do is follow a certain list of compliances, and those are making sure that they've got exit signs and handicapped bathrooms and fire extinguishers, and so that's how they themselves are mandated by the federal government. You've got to get with your local municipality. The problem with that is these, the, the, the places that we're having the issues are not registered through OMAS. They are not billing Medicaid for the individuals living in the houses. What they're doing is they're transporting individuals from the houses to an off-site location, and that location is billing Medicaid. Gotcha. So they have they figured out a way to get around that, and that's why we have so many of them in the city that are not registered. Okay. And, and it's not just a city. I mean, it, it's a county-wide issue. <coughs> it just seems to be... I'm so, uh, I mean, it, it's a try... It's. I'm going to say probably a nationwide issue because it's a loophole, you know, and like most things you see the loophole, somebody's going to jump through it, you know. Our biggest problem is we just, again, we're going to have to go to these places and say where are these people live. Because, I mean, if we had a fire like, um, and Moose and I talked about this several years ago, if we had a fire like we had up on 3rd Street that was uh, when Steve Bodmer's house burned about eight, ten years ago or whatever, and it's a residential facility, we, we'd have had all kind of loss of life. Can, so, can we get some of these registration forms or pamphlets or whatever we have and put them in the uh, Jeff Joseph, is, 
uh, his vehicle, police cars, or when we go to these places, say, "Hey, I, I don't know if you know this, but here, here, here here's sure, your I registration. Mean, we, yeah. It's up to you. If we come back and you're not registered, here we go." You know. Yeah. I mean, and that's a lot. You know, <laughs> and as Brigham can tell you, we are on a record-setting pace again for 2022 on our drug overdoses. All right. You know. Yeah. 2021 was. Even the, the figures that I gave you guys were was not even the end of the year. So, yeah. you know, and, we'll, and sometime at the end of this month, about the middle of February, we'll do our yearly stats like I normally do. And you'll see just the increase that we've had in that kind of traffic. Can I ask a brief question? Uh, <clears throat> if we, and it is a spin off of Craig's comment. If we missed half of that 30 day period, best for us to newspaper social media whatever it is get that out now so that we are protected you know in terms yeah, of I think the more you advertise it, <coughs> individuals know I'm, but yeah. I'm saying if we tell but them there's of the laws no excuse uh, yeah. in any in any legislation but so. if we tell them there's a 30-day moratorium and they say they didn't know anything about it at Doesn't all matter. okay yeah I just I didn't want another loophole yeah, it would be nice to let them know but <laughs> legally speaking the fact that they don't know about it does not yeah. matter. Okay. I think putting together a registration form is the like we have other priorities right now is what I'm trying to say. And I'm not downplaying this, but there's a lot of money to be had in this project with the state of Ohio's demolition fund. And that's where all of our focus has been. We can advertise this for sure, but like putting together this registration form and everything else, right now we're working night day on this other thing. <coughs> You're talking Who, who? Right now we're short on staff. That's what I'm right up for. We don't even have this person to identify them because right now we, we can't even fill the spots we have in the current police department. Correct. <clears throat> I understand all of those arguments for, for sure. <clears throat> but on December 23rd, we passed the legislation and they're supposed to register within 30 days or else they start receiving a $10,000 per day that they're not registered fine. So when you're talking about being short on staff and Because we lost someone on the 24th, by the way. I'm just saying we're, we're short on staff a lot more than the board right now. I, I, I hear you, but $10,000 per day times if there's five, and we know there's more than five, if you're getting $50,000 a day in fines that we can collect, but so then, that was, that's, then that's easily going to pay for you're it. saying any of them that have opened since that day no any of them that have not registered 30 days from december 23rd they have to register Which with be january 23rd. with your office and if they're not registered and pam goes to one of to one of those places and they're not registered and they're operating a, a residential living facility there to ship people off to whatever they can be fined ten thousand dollars per day All right. that they're not registered <clears throat> i can't make them register but we can find them exactly well, that's, right. that's, that's exactly that's what, I'm, that's what i'm saying and i mean if i i don't think it and just for you know Arguments say what needs to be included in the registry. What information would they have? To That's business is just yeah, it's just their address. Address, address business and, name. And uh, probably how many people was it? I think it was address, the really business simple. name, and how many occupants was it? Yeah. Am I how correct many, in that? So I mean, we can get any type of form, and it can, can we get that typed up tomorrow and start putting in police vehicles and fire department vehicles and. A picture Put on the online, website so they can fill it out online too that was my thing that'd be great yeah, yeah. social media that way we're covered well but i you know like i said if, if we go to one of them and they're not registered find them and then here's your form if you don't here you go you know that's it's i don't think we need to that's some extravagant form just address number of occupants uh, that's it address, address and, and, and number of occupants yes. that's post the registration form 
That's the only thing I need. Yeah. So we'll, we'll give them an avenue to do it that hasn't been forthcoming of it as of since it's Which means we have zero registered. Which means we're we're gonna be do a whole lot of money after January twenty third. <laughs> well hit these other deadlines first. Well John. May I have a point of inquiry? Is is this is this also run congruent with the no more than three people, non-related people in a home? That's a zoning. Yeah. Pardon me? That was a zoning. That's a zoning oh, okay. issue. Okay. Yeah. Aren't they going to kind of overlap those? Well, they are. Yeah. yeah, which is a great way to make sure your zoning is being enforced. Okay. But two separate distinct ordinances. Thank you. And then there's lots of times when we have two ordinances or two laws or whatever, they just kind of cross in there. So for those that don't work in it all the time, you know, it just, that's just the way the law, ordinances and laws work sometimes. Anybody else? We're good. Chief, thank you. Thank you. Any other audience participation? Moving on to communications, I'm seeing none. Anybody? Uh, on the reports, I'm seeing none. Uh, on the ordinances, uh, Marta, would you please give ordinance 2201 uh, first reading? An ordinance creating necessary inspections and applicable fees for food trucks operating within the city of Ironton and declaring an emergency first reading. Craig? Chris, I'd like to move to amend ordinance 2201. Specifically, if I can find my page, specifically section three after the first sentence to include the words adjusted annually based on CPI and in section four, sentence five to include the words at the end adjusted annually based on CPI. Jacob? I'll second that motion. We have um, Craig moved and Jacob second um, <clears throat> to uh, just to amend it, correct? To amend uh, ordinance 2201, sections three and section five to <coughs> include CPI included. Roll call, please. Clary? Aye. Haney? Aye. Harvey? Aye. Fox? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Aye. Pierce? Aye. Ordinance 20, 2201 will be amended in sections three and five. Moving on to resolutions, we have res resolution number 2202. Marta, can you please give that? Mr. King, I make the motion that we suspend the rules and give uh, ordinance 2201 second and third reading by title only. Okay. Amendment. Amended. amended. Okay. Uh, Marta, would you please give amended ordinance number 2201, second and third, third reading by title only. Whatever. Sorry. Sorry. An ordinance creating necessary inspections and applicable fees for food trucks operating within the city of Ironton and declaring an emergency second reading. An ordinance creating necessary inspections and applicable fees for food trucks operating within the city of Ironton. I'll second. We need a second by Chris. We need a Craig. suspension, I think. Craig. Move to move to strike those readings. Move to strike those readings because we haven't suspended for a little bit. Okay. Move to strike. Move. I'll second that. Second. Moved by Craig, second by Jacob to strike the readings of Ordinance 2201. Roll call, please. Cleary. Aye. Haney. Aye. Harvey. Aye. Fox. Aye. Perry. Aye. Pierce. No. No. Ordinance 2201 has been struck. Yeah, he, he had a motion. Suspend the rules. Motion to suspend the rules. We need a second. You, Chris, did you? Chris, second? Yep. Okay. We have a motion to suspend the rules for Ordinance 21, 2201, that's my fault. 
2201. Roll call, please, Marta. Leary. Aye. Haney. Aye. Harvey. Aye. Hawk. Aye. Perry. Aye. Peters. Aye. Ordinance 2201. Um, suspend the rules. Please give Ordinance 2201 second and third reading by title only. An ordinance creating necessary inspections and applicable fees for food trucks operating within the city of Ironton and declaring an emergency. Second reading. An ordinance creating necessary inspections and applicable fees for food trucks operating within the city of Ironton and declaring an emergency. Third reading. Craig. Move to um, adopt amended Ordinance 2201. I second. Chris. We have a motion by Craig, second by Chris, to adopt Ordinance 2201. Roll call, please. Cleary. Aye. Haney. Aye. Harvey. Aye. Hawk. Aye. Perry. Aye. Pierce. Aye. Ordinance 22, amended Ordinance 2201 has been adopted. Under yes. Just, I just want to make sure on Section 3 of the first sentence you want it to read, said fee shall be increased each year in accordance with Price Let me check for you. Section three. <coughs> yes, after the word yearly. Yes, adjusted annually based on CPI. You want me to say adjusted annually or says it shall be increased each year in accordance with CPI? <coughs> well, sometimes it shouldn't increase, I think, with CPI. So we said adjusted. That. Yes. Okay. And then the same thing for section four. <coughs> um, after sentence after the word inspection. <coughs> Good on that. Yep. Okay, on the resolutions, resolution number 2202. Marta, would you please give that reading? Requesting the county auditor to certify the estimated property tax revenue for a renewal recreation levy and declaring an emergency. Craig? I'd like to mention that was given favorable recommendation by Parks and Rec's committee this evening, and I'd like to move to pass resolution 2202. Bob? Second, yeah. Jagger, we have discussion. But, well, no, before we, uh, I'd like to make mention that it was favorably recommended by Finance Committee as well. Favorably recommended by Finance and Rick. I have a motion and a second. Roll call, please, Marta. Cleary. Aye. Haney. Aye. Harvey. Aye. 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 Resolution number 2202 has passed on the miscellaneous. Bob? Uh, I'd like to go into executive session to talk about property acquisition. You know me, I'm the guy that hates executive session. I know. I know. I know. I know. So but do you have a specific time you, limit? Dave, Hal, and Give you. me. Four minutes. Okay. We'll be out of here. Four minutes. Any action to follow? No. Who do you need involved? Pardon me? Who do you need involved? Um, all council, Marta can leave. I need the mayor and John Needham. So it's Brigham. Craig? I'll second. Roll call, please. Larry? Aye. Amy? Aye. Harvey? Aye. Hawk? Aye. Harry? Aye. Here's I will accept. You need to go to adjournment. Uh, no adjournment.